coming at you from the OLR podcast studio. Eh, it's really more of a basement. Coming to you from the OLR basement studio. But it's still a podcast. Coming to you from the podcast basement studio. Yeah, but you still need to say OLR. Coming to you from the OLR podcast basement studio. Oh, that's way too many words. Coming at you. That's not enough. You still need to say OLR. Let's just start. It's OLR. Welcome to the Shut show. up, Lucas. Shut, up, Shut Hickman. up, Lucas. Coming at you live. Semi live. It's Lucas Gene Hickman. It's Dustin Roger Elliott Kennedy. Lucas is coming in today, six feet two, two hundred twenty nine point five pounds. Whoop, whoop. Blue eyes, beautiful blue eyes. They're big hazel. ass head. They're hazel. Shut up, head's, Lucas. Head's big as shit. We like to call him tripod, if you know what I mean. You know what I mean. I'm six feet tall, two hundred too many damn pounds. Two hundred too many. Fluffy ass Caucasian, sex appeal, baby. Caucasian. Hmm. Not only you listen to the best podcast in the great state of Tennessee. The best podcast in Middle Tennessee, without a doubt. Without a doubt. Without a shadow of a doubt. Rest assured, it's the best damn podcast ever recorded in Hermitage Springs, Tennessee. We don't know nothing about those interstates, those four-lane highways. It's the One Lane Road. What? One Lane Road podcast coming at you now. Coming in hot. Lucas Hickman. Coming in hot. How are you, baby? What are you doing, Bubba? I was just driving down the road the other day, and I thought, you know what? I'm going to come in real, real hot. I said, I don't ever come in hot. Well, today's the day. I'm just so high. Hyped. Hyped. Okay. To see you. Hyped. Okay. It's been two long weeks. Well, we had a little bit of listener feedback. Uh oh. From our Josh. Connor Hale says, Legend has it. DK still can't change the tire. Oh, okay. That's what we're doing. That's what we're doing. That's where we're starting at. That's one. I'm taking a jab at DK. Way to bring me down, Hale. I'll, William. I just uh, brought you after. Mm. Uh, that's the only one I got. I saw oh. a little feedback. <laughs> <laughs> it was very little feedback. Well, uh, Adam Cho was not happy that we, as an I, called him 50 years old. Well, I mean, if he wasn't 50 years old, we wouldn't have called him that. 47 rounds off to 50. Every, in most every day. Every day. So, sorry, Joe. Said, he said, sound, you, sound, you guys sound like you had a good time, not a real good time. That's all right. It's fair. Fair, yeah, to, fair say. to say. Fair to say. It was all right. First two it days was, were all right. Yeah. Days aren't as good. Wild as they used to be. Nights aren't as wild. I'm drinking a milkshake right now, full disclosure. Yeah. To my left is an empty monster can. And? An empty bush light can. And? Yeah, you got to I moved it. Yeah. Milkshake today on the agenda. Mm-hmm. So pretty, it should be pretty lit, as the children say. You, you were, were lit, coming in hot. Oh. Uh, I am hot. Well, you, you do have a... I'm barefooted with a hoodie on. You're barefooted with a hoodie. I ain't gonna impress in this basement. Well, you ain't impressing nobody. That's for damn sure. It's hoodie season almost. It was almost very, very nice and cool this morning. It was chilly. Now it's a little warm. I like it. I like the weather. Got a question? Oh wait, no, not a question. But not a question. Um, you brought up our commercials. Yes. Yes. You brought up our commercials. Jalen Jalen Hunt brought up our commercials. Yes. Which I got some stuff to read from Jalen here in just a few minutes. Now that being said, yes. The original recordings are gone. You have to go back to episode 58 and just listen to them. We don't have them. Oh, you don't have them? Mm-mm. That's, you, don't, you don't have any people. Right. Okay. I asked Lucas. Jalen messaged me this week, and Jalen listens to our current episodes and goes back and listens, and she's like, wow, y'all took a whole, almost a whole year off. So she's like, I'm actually not three years behind. I'm just two years behind. Right. So you're welcome. But what I did find. Oh. Was the original oh, script from? All right. Oh. Uh, we had commercials on episode. Wait, it is it episode, episode 58. fifty-eight? This won't be as good as the ones from episode fifty-eight. Life sucks. Job sucks. Uh. Significant other always fussing. Yeah. Baby crying. Run over by a train. Even hit a crack head with your truck. If this sounds like. Your day. <laughs> I can't read upside down. If this sounds like you, listen to the OLR podcast. We're more satisfying than Asian massage. Oh, that was you. That was you. Um, we're life changers. Man, we really suck at writing, too. Let me see this. Let me see this. There's the whole thing. 
<clears throat> Life sucks. Job sucks. Significant another always bitching at you in the background. Baby crying. You got run over by a train. You even hit a cracker with your truck. If it sounds like you, listen to OLR. We're sat more satisfied than the Asian massage. We're life changers. We just want this to be an hour and a half of your life. It doesn't suck. <laughs> yeah. That was a good one. Yeah, we meant that one. We meant that one. Uh, episode 58. Somewhere to find that on episode 58. And it's real good shit. <laughs> oh, wow. Uh, she said the other one was like the fast speaking. Yeah, I would say the other one was. Hey guys, DK and Lucas here. Are you looking for a good deal on a new podcast? Bad credit, no credit? No shit, ours is free. We talk uh, music, sports, fitness, and how hot your mom is. <laughs> I forgot about that. So, I did. No, I, was, I never forget hot moms. <laughs> so if you're tired of listening to your old busted podcast, come on down and give a listen to all our podcasts. I hate that commercial. One Lane Road Podcast is brought to you in a basement. Yes, I said a basement. You can download it on iTunes, Stitcher, YouTube. But why would you do that? Follow. Them on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. These guys go out of their are so out of touch that they probably even have MySpace. That's the one you read fast. Yeah. At the end, she's like, "You read it so fast, I don't even know <laughs> what it said." And that was the premise of it. Lucas R- Lucas wrote all that. <laughs> Lucas wrote every bit of this, I think. Mm-hmm. And he gave me the dawning task of trying to read that in a. <laughs> <laughs> I can't understand it. Lucas did a fantastic job of writing that up. I hate that commercial. That's what it was. Because we done the, uh, right. well, uh, did, we, did we do like a, come on. That's that's what I done at the end of because. Oh, yeah, yeah, because yeah, it's car dealership. That, we did car there was dealer. a local car dealership doing, yeah. come yeah. on. Yeah. And Lucas said, I hate that commercial. Cause you, so we would have ended on, come on down, give it, listen to the OLR podcast. Come on. I hate that commercial. <laughs> One Lane Podcast is brought to you. So I said, I'm going to do no. Stitcher, YouTube, why would you do that? Follow them on Twitter, Facebook, and. Yeah. Hello. Yeah, LLC. <laughs> LLC. LLC. I believe there was one more that it may not have. This one may not have ever made it. Well, there's a couple on here that may not have made it. I, I don't know if we did either. I think we've done it later episodes. Jalen will tell us in a week or two. This is the firm of OL and R. I, I, I haven't read this one, so I don't know. That one didn't make it. I okay. remember that. Have you been recently wronged by your radio? Are you looking for retribution? Listen to this testimonial from one of our recent clients. While I was driving last September, a real douche came on the radio and dry humped my ears for 30 minutes. I got in touch with the OLR firm, and it turns out they didn't help a bit. So if you are in the need for a minor disappointment, get in touch with us at olrpodcast.gmail.com. Okay. You never read that. I didn't know that one. Okay. I like it. Um, Nothing like getting your ears dry humped. Going down the road. Yeah. Uh, the most interesting podcast in the world. If they say your name in the show, you're ten times more likely to win the lottery. If your mom sees them at a concert, she comes home and divorces your dad. <laughs> I'm sorry. These were just ramblings of me writing stuff, I guess. Uh, when they talk politics, Donald Trump tweets real news. Um, <laughs> it's said that the sound of their voices bring escorts running. Uh-huh. When your mom sees yeah. them at concerts, your dad is divorced the next day. Again, I guess I hit that. Uh, Shaq hits two free throws each time they say his <laughs> name. <laughs> uh, that was just my... You ever shared those with the world? Yeah, I mean, first I time I'm, I'm hearing it with them for the first time. I actually remember the Donald Trump. I yeah. think we worked on that one together. Yeah, some of those... Uh, it, takes a, it takes a minute to get, get those working out. But they're fun. They're all fun. That was good at jangling, though. Hey, let's, let's go ahead and let me pull my conversation up with her and some of the other stuff she's talked about. I've got a strict 12 o'clock appointment today. I thought my something must be going on. Hit me at that 9.45. Yes. Andy Smith is coming. Andy Smith, one of our sponsors for the North Springs Music Festival, mm-hmm. we'll talk about. Uh, let's see. Just, um, you know, there's a, there's a few. There's a few things she said here. Um, she gets our twisted sense of humor, thank God. Mm-hmm. Um, That's lost on some people, so thank you very much. Lord me. have mercy, I have died. Episode 58, Ask OLR. Y'all doing the voices you'd use if you were on one of those 1-900 phone sex lines. Uh-huh. Imagine they were pretty provocative. Voices. I would imagine. I have seriously sat here and laughed till I have actual tears. She didn't even give us a shout on Instagram, too, that she said something about Working her left ear, 
comedy show in the right ear. <laughs> I don't forget. I don't remember what you said. Uh, but thank you, Jalen, for the Instagram shout out. I think we got a few, probably a few new listeners. God bless. I hope your wife never listened to this episode. <laughs> there's <laughs> there's several of them. We hope she never listened to. I said yes. What did I say? Mm-hmm. She said you even led with. Since my wife doesn't listen, I'll tell this story. <laughs> And then midway through the story, you said, man, I hope she doesn't listen to this. It was a story about her wanting to go swimming, and you didn't want to go. Then you changed your mind. She pouted and told her, told you that you ruined her day, even though you were watching her. <laughs> you went back and forth, but you finally did go swimming. Yes. I remember that story. I do remember that one. Um, let's see. Oh, and the commercials, just promoting the podcast, saying if your life sucks, listen to the podcast, because it doesn't suck. Uh, the Ronnie Dunn story, which is legendary. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, what's wrong with him? <laughs> <laughs> if you, Ronnie Dunn. Uh, and that's that's pretty much, I mean, then she says, no, you did not just hate on C- Kane Brown. I said, well, full dis- I said, first off, F Kane Brown. Yeah. But then, full disclosure, Kane Brown gets much more hate this time goes on. <laughs> yeah. Buckle up. Yeah, it, um. You're way behind. He wasn't near as famous when we first started hating on him. Yeah, he sucks. He sucks. Yeah. He's the worst. He, he's the one that doesn't get enough hate. I've said that many times. Yeah. You hate him, I think. And he got lost in his own on his own land not long ago. You saw that story, right? No, I did not. Google Kane Brown lost on land. Several people tagged us in this um, on Facebook, and I just never did. We never have talked about it, but now it seems like a good a time as any to Talk about Kane Brown getting lost and having to call him. Here you go. Kane Brown got lost on his own property for seven hours and had to call the police to be rescued. This was one of the revelations that came from the 26-year-old pop stars, pop country music star's recent interview with fellow country star Jenna Kramer, who apparently now works for the Junk Food Entertainment Show. Some things you just, like, there's several times that after I've left this podcast, I'm like, man, maybe I shouldn't have said that. Maybe I, we shouldn't have recorded that. On 30 Acres. He got lost on 30 acres. You can see. You can see across 30 acres. You yeah. don't get lost on 30 acres. That's not the, as an adult. Not as a 26-year-old person. The two fields. Like, the field behind my dad's house is 15 acres. Yeah. So two of those he got lost on. Yeah. You don't get lost on 15 acres. He's from Tennessee. He should do better than that. 30, 30 acres of forest. Eh. Someone help. I'm lost. All jokes aside, the real story is I moved into a new house. I own 30 acres of 3,000 around me. I told my wife I wanted to go check out the property. I'll be 30 minutes. I went with my friend and his girl. I was in shorts and a t-shirt. 30 minutes turned into three hours. It started raining, turned dark, and dropped to 40 degrees. I will Situation looked grim. Group looked grim. <laughs> You're, they were lost on 30 acres in rain and 40 degrees. Not exactly Antarctica out here. They were uh, lost on it. And when, well, he may not live anymore. I don't know. This was recent. It ain't been 40 degrees around here in quite a while. Oh, my God. He was without his cell phone. Another person oh. in the group had a cell phone battery with just 7% battery oh. left. The group of the three began using GPS to find their way, only to be met with the all, all these, these cliffs. cliffs. Unable to be driven. They were in a vehicle. They were in Tennessee. Brown said he turned to fellow musician Ryan up church for some assistance as he lives in the area. He finds me with his buddy, and now three turned into five of us lost. He has another four friends riding around in a can am, and they start getting shot at. Brown explained. Brown said a female friend who was with him started freaking out as she has asthma. We had to get her out, so we called the cops. The cops arrive and hear the gunshots and think we're shooting at them. He continued, we yell at them and tell them we're not armed and made it out. Ah. That was a... My favorite kind of country star looked like a ninja turtle (laughs) with knuckle tattoos who gets lost on 30 acres. He looks like a ninja turtle. A little bit. He's a white Russell Russell Westbrook. You know what I'm a little bit more sad about? I don't know if he's white. No, he's not completely. Uh, what I'm a little bit more sad about is that Ryan Upchurch got lost. I don't know. Ryan Upchurch, the singer Upchurch, Ashley Upchurch, I don't really care. <laughs> I just I think they're all idiots. 
I don't know who Ryan Up Church is. The well, we've listened to his music on here before. He's the the country rapper. Up Church. Yeah. Oh. Up Church. That's why I said Ryan Up Church or Up Church. Ashley Up Church. Ryan Up Church. Ryan Tannehill. Ryan Gosling. I Ryan even, Cross, my own cousin. I don't care. They're all idiots. I'm trying to bring everybody together, and they want to pick. Want me to pick a side? He's over. Oh, well, never mind. I don't even know what that is. Nah. Oh, you're on George Floyd's death now. Mm. Oh, isn't it? Tired of the people. Anyway. Lord, you're silly, King Brown. You're from Saudi Daisy down in Chattanooga and get lost in Tennessee. I don't like it. I don't like it. I'll say a quick prayer, rest in peace, the Mexican pizza at Taco Bell. What are you doing, Taco Bell? What happened? They're taking the Taco Bell Mexican pizza off the menu. I've never had one. Well, I do. Is that something that you enjoy? A lot. Regularly. No mm-hmm. tomato. No tomatoes. Do they ever? No, I have to pick them off. <laughs> do they? You know what? I One job. To make. The, what I really like about whenever you order something special from a place like that, like hold the tomatoes, is that they sound like they're going to do it. They give you a, oh, okay, hold the tomatoes. And they'll even put it on their little stupid screen that says everything correct. And you go, yeah. So we went through the process of saying, yep, I verify that you verified what I said. And then I get it, and that's not right. I would just, I'd rather you just tell me that. Tell me that you're not going to, you're going to put tomatoes on because that's what it comes. Yeah. I think a bunch of people must have went to your school of education and thought and just said, no, I'm not paying the price for that Mexican pizza that keeps going up. You know, uh, somebody like 25 Lucas Hickmans showed up to Taco Bell and said, you know, <clears throat> initially I was okay. With 439. With 439 for, for your Mexican pizza. However, you have um, risen your price to 779 and that seems. Out of hand. A, li- a little out of my price range for what I feel comfortable personally myself, Lucas King Hickman. Beautiful blue eyes, big ass head. And they call me crap on. Um, what I would feel that that's worth that that, that, that is worth. Yeah. Now am I get now am I getting beans and rice with that? I'm not. Mm-mm. Am I getting cinnamon twist? Nope. Nope. I'm getting a drink. I'm, getting, I'm getting a watered down drink. Oh, oh, it don't come with a drink. Oh, okay. That's 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 extra. Okay. So actually, I'm not. You know, I'm like eleven dollars in now. <laughs> this was a Taco Bell stop. I'm just. Yeah, I can get L tap for that. I'm I'm sorry. Good luck to you, Taco Bell. I hope I hope everything continues well for you. Because you know, go run down 500 feet, ask Zaxby's. Actually, ask them. Ask Zaxby's what I'm going to do for eleven dollars. This, this is a drive off. This is a drive off. This is what happened. I'm educating you about your highest prices. Keep the Mexican pieces. Keep keep the tomatoes. But you this is not take a, off that you're not taking off. This is not a drive off in the traditional sense because I'm not taking your highest food and I'm not giving you my money. No. So I'm just leaving because. So you, you and your people, you, now, and, you and your people. Now you know the consumer is both. Uh, I was comfortable paying seven seventy nine plus a drink. Mm. I'm a sheep, <laughs> fat boy. <laughs> I just want my pizza. I'm disappointed. Okay. I've never had one, so if it's something worth being disappointed about, I'm sorry that it's gone. Would you like to talk about anything else? Yeah, I would. Hey, why do people back in the parking spot? You back show in the up? parking spot? No, they're show-offs. What are they showing off for? I backed into work the other day. Uh-huh. Why? Why? What is the thought on it? I just said I didn't ever back, but I backed up. Here, I work with a kid who's never backed up into Tutco a day in his life. I backed up in a parking spot for a reason that day, and I can't remember what. Mm-hmm. I think I was, oh, I was, I was unloading stuff closer to the door. And I'm going to back up to the side. Mm-hmm. He sees me. What's he do? Backs in. Backs in. I went. Who are you trying to impress? Well, right. what are you doing? I'm doing. I'm doing it for a reason. Mm-hmm. What are you doing? I'm loading something up. But I go to Lowe's, Jackson. and they're backed into the damn parking spot. Why are they doing that? Are they making a quick getaway? Why are you in such a hurry to leave? That you're gonna you're gonna block the road back in. Are they afraid that you can't? Are they afraid about backing up into coming on traffic because they're leaving? You're backing What's the in, difference? You're What's backing the into oncoming traffic whenever you're pulling in. I don't get it. I don't like it. I just think they're the people that always have to be seen. 
I guarantee it. I guarantee it. People, they have some sort of, uh, what's it called? Superiority? Maybe. Napoleon complex. Yeah, man, I'll go with that. Yeah. You feel confident about using that term? Well, I mean, for situation? short. For short. Most of them are short for some reason. The guy that's five foot three backs into a parking spot. Guaranteed every time. That's a big ass truck backs into a parking spot. Stupid. I don't like it. I don't get it. They're always blocking traffic. They're always, they, <clears throat> they're always driving a crew cab <coughs> long wheelbase truck, and they're going to try to back into a parking spot that's got too many vans parked on both sides of them. But they're going to get in there. They're going to get in. Come hell or high water, they're going to back in. Do you know what would be a lot easier? Pull in. What's the, what's the chances 10 out of 10 they parallel park? No, not one. There's not one chance in a thousand that they can parallel park. Not one chance in a thousand. I, don't, I disagree with that. I don't. I think they're the best parallel parkers probably in God's Green Earth. I doubt it. I bet they couldn't do it. I don't want to parallel park. I'll go on up. I'll walk another There's th- no reason to parallel park. I'll Tennessee. walk so many more feet before I try to parallel park. Mm-hmm. I'll walk a mile. I've backed into so many things. I'm not a good backer. Right. I backed into my sister's uh, navigator one time. who was parked right behind me. When I looked, I looked, I looked dead in the face of that navigator. And said. Knew it was there. You're right there. And then I said. I'm gonna put there you are, navigator. Like, I just hit a navigator. Then I knew it was there. <laughs> I've backed into the dumpster at least 10 times taking trash off. <laughs> Objects are indeed closer than they appear. <laughs> Yeah, you use that center mirror sometimes. Mm. It don't do the same thing that those outside mirrors do. Yeah, try that. Yeah, try that. Thing, yeah. So you were in a joke mood, joke telling mood when I got here. Today. I was. I I had uh, dreamed a bunch of jokes. And you were loving them. I was so happy with how stupid they were. <laughs> you want to tell one? No, I'm not going to tell. I'm not going to tell that one because it was racist. It was a little racist. Yeah. <laughs> which which five years ago was okay. Ten years ago was very okay. Twenty years ago it was a knee slap. Yeah. Today, probably frowned upon. Probably a little frowned upon. Because, you know. Yeah. Yeah. You know. You know. It didn't have anything to do with the black person. It didn't. No. Mm-mm. No. We freed, it wasn't one in. <laughs> we freed the blacks from that one. Yeah. <laughs> but there was other races in it <laughs> that were misidentified. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And the white person ultimately was looking like the jackass. Which was the point of the joke. Exactly. Which it would be missed. The point of the joke. Of course it would be missed. Yeah. Because the point of the joke was, because, you know, was the white guy was a jackass. But, you know. It would be missed. But, you know. Yeah. You can't really do that. No. You can't really do that anymore. Mm-mm. Normal stuff, gone. Mm-hmm. Sense of humor, out the window. Get out of here. No rationalization. In this crazy, crazy world. What do you want to talk about about your uh, upcoming show? Tell us about it. Tell me about it, Tom Brokaw. Tell me about it, Tom Brokaw. Tom F and Broke over here. <laughs> I just want to talk about it. Let's talk about it. What you got? Who you got coming? Who's your final lineup? I tell you, we I believe we could have done a two day mm. if I had faith in everybody coming, but you know, I just don't know. You're so wrong. I just didn't know the area was ready for a two day. Right. I don't know if I was Maybe ready next for a two day. You probably were not. There was several because others. You, you know what happens when you got two days? People stay overnight. You know what happens at night? Oh, no good. All that. All that stuff after 10, 11 o'clock. Nonsense. It's the devil's work. Between between midnight, 5 or 6 in the morning, that's the devil's work. You know when your your downtime is? Between like 7 and 12 the next day. You didn't get that nighttime downtime. You got to do it the next day. No oh, good. People could camp. That's a very campable field. Oh, yeah, they could camp. You know what else they could do? Drink all the whiskey at 12 o'clock. They're whiskey. They can drink it. Yeah, that's true. That's true. And then people start cutting donuts in fields because that's what fields are for. That's good. Mm-hmm. Should I take their keys like your big brother? Yeah, I don't think you're going to be able to pull that one off. I was just hoping, you know, they'd have too many wine coolers and fornicate in a tent somewhere. That's That would be. You're talking about donuts. You're talking yeah. about damaged land. Yeah. No good. Mm-mm. But in all seriousness, you were serious. So Fights and fires. I am serious. Yeah. Fights and fires. Not a fan of either one. Mm-mm. No, ain't got time for it. I, who wants it? Ah, uh, mm. not me. But who's your final lineup? Ry Davis. Yes, sir. Brandon Martin. Mm-hmm. Andrew Pope. Yeah. Vanessa Rogers. Mm-hmm. Brother Reigns. Mike DeMeza with Stephen Dow. 
Matt Mayberry, Josh McCreary, then added yesterday Cherokee Upton and Jordan Walker. That's a big lineup. Two young girls. Mm-hmm. And sing their butts off. Well, how's it going to play out? What are you What are you going to do? Is it going to be, what time's it going to start and when's it going to end? We're looking uh, start time 2 p.m. <clears throat> going until at least 9. So seven hours. We're looking at 30 minute time slots, 45 minute time slots, one hour time slots. It's mm-hmm. all to be determined who. Who, what, and where? I know I can say Cherokee and and uh, Jordan will go on about three o'clock. It'll probably be this probably the third act. Up. Mm-hmm. They wanted they kind of wanted a time. So to kind of go, well, I'll just jump into them. Uh, I just want to talk about kind of each artist. Mm-hmm. My, my first thing that's really been bugging me. That yeah. I, I, I want to talk to our listeners about when someone says, "Well, I've never heard of some of these people." Mm-hmm. What's well, kind of the point of this? Kind of I, I get it. I, I've got two little. Missed at the bunk here. Uh-huh. There was once upon a time where I never heard of Cody Jinks. Right. There was once upon a time I never heard of Tyler Childress. Right. You you weren't there whenever they started. I'm right? not saying we're un- unearthing the next Cody Jinks or Tyler Childress. But we might be. But we might be. The thing is, here's here's a more relevant uh, analogy to give to you. Once upon a time, about three years ago, nobody in this part other than me and a couple other people had heard of Jason Needy. Right. Do you know what the success rate of Jason Needy's concert was? Huge. Huge. And enough people. Huge. And enough people said, hey, Jason and Courtney coming. Jason and Courtney weren't known three years ago. Right. Um, UPTO. Um, so, you know, if you didn't know Jason E before the Songwriter Series show, you know, what's, uh, just give us a chance. I'm, I'm watching Lucas here on YouTube, too. But, uh, so the deal with Cherokee, she's she's in high school still. Like she's young. Over at Salina. She's at Life Church. That's a Life Church show. So she's a cook villain now. Or so local. She she's from so she's from Salina. Okay. She's from Salina. So a lot of people were trying to get me to get her. I know David Davo and she's been playing some local shows here. And then uh, Randy Birdwell said, you know, hey, she's good, blah, blah, blah. Keisha Boone, Chris Boone, they sent me a video of her playing in Livingston the other night. Mm-hmm. And uh, I, I hadn't booked her. I've been kind of kicking around the idea of calling her mom. Mm-hmm. She's so young. I'm obviously going to contact the parents right. about this. Well, I'm in a store in Cookville yesterday, and she's there. Huh. I said, hey, Cherokee. I said, this is kind of weird. I said, no, you don't know me very well. I don't know you, but. I said, I'm not doing a little music fest in Jackson County in October. Mm-hmm. I said, your name keeps popping up, and I got about one more slot left. And uh, I would like to have got a couple other guys here local, too. It's mm-hmm. just kind of how it fell. But uh, I said, if you're interested, and I was like, I was looking for one more female singer to go with Vanessa, you know, on the bill. And she goes, oh, you're looking for one more female singer. And I was talking about her. Mm-hmm. She was sitting next to a friend who's also her same age. She goes, my friend Jordan is awesome. Mm-hmm. So she pulls up Jordan's Instagram girl. Like, no, nah, I'm not that good. And I put this like 15 seconds for Instagram. I was like, oh, you want to play together? Yeah. I was like, y'all, uh, give me your mom's numbers. Mm-hmm. So I called both their moms, got everything cleared on that. And so they're going to play a, they're going to do like a song swap. These two girls, since they're friends yeah. and they're yeah. younger. And I thought, how about we just do a set together where you guys, Cherokee do a song, Jordan do a song, you'll do a song together, whatever you want. Mm-hmm. So that's, that's where they're going to be. Uh, yeah. I mean, everybody in Clay County, there's, the uh, reaction to her post yesterday was, was fantastic, and the same for Jordan. Her mom's at Jackson County, uh, grew up in Jackson County. So, other girl, she goes to school in Monterey. Jordan, she's a good singer. Yeah, she does a lot of mm-hmm. old rock and you know, stuff like that too. So, uh, look forward to having her. Then, uh, Kaylin Oldham here, uh, yeah, a lot younger than us. She mm-hmm. kept, she kept text, uh, messaging me and saying, "Hey, get my friend Josh on the bed." So. Josh McCreary looked him up. He don't have a lot of stuff on YouTube. But, mm-hmm. uh, but anyway, he's got a Facebook page. You can go follow it. Josh McCreary Music. It's M-C-C-R-A-R-Y. Uh, he does a lot of just old old country music that I like and what most people like. So he'll, uh, you know. and of course, Matt Mayberry from Dawson's Branch will be on the show. Matt Mayberry. And, uh. Of course, he, you know, I'm sure Matt will use his time slot to go uh, do, do some originals, some covers that he always does. He's open. He's been on a couple of our shows. He's been on, been on two of our shows. Yeah. Here's Josh McCreary. I don't know why. Where's the speakers at? 
the, the, all the videos Josh has got on his Facebook page, just him and his buddy sitting around looking like they're having some Coors Light, sitting in the living room somewhere. So um, excited to excited to meet Josh. I've only talked to him through Facebook. Um, He's got a Mando. I don't know who's playing it, if it's him or uh, one of his buddies, but he got a mandolin. So you got, got a So that's our three local talents. Uh-huh. I, uh, there's a couple I really, really want to reach out to, and I even mentioned it to them. And by the time the bill got filled out, I didn't get to holler at a couple of them that I really, really wanted to. Internet is slow uh, right. the day for some reason. So, uh, so those are the three local towns, or four local towns, I guess you'd say, but three acts. And then we're going to have Vanessa Rogers. Like I said, Vanessa's from Jamestown originally, but she plays all of them down Broadway, Tootsie's Rippies. Damn. I saw her at a bonfire at Scarlet Gentry's back probably five years ago. <laughs> right. And then uh, I've seen her again at Rippy's one day. Me and Mackie were there. And I said, hey, I said, this is really random. I said, but did I meet you at a bonfire about five years ago? <laughs> and uh, I think that she doesn't have a lot of stuff online either. So I don't even know if we need to look at it. Okay. Yeah, just, there she is. That's her right there. Uh-huh. Uh, I would just tell you guys, we'll, we'll tell you that Vanessa Rogers has got some. It's Vanessa Don Rogers on Facebook. And you can go. Check out some of her videos. She, she's been doing a lot of uh, quarantine videos at home for tips and stuff. So mm. uh, her website seems to be a little, little uh, behind. I'm not sure. We got into some Christian stuff. Looks like lately, mm-hmm. but her old time stuff. Like she played Tootsie's Birthday Bash. Uh, says says in 2011, Vanessa got her first real gig playing at Tootsie's, the number one honky tonk in Nashville, and began a full time career as a singer, songwriter, performer. She since performed all over the country, from the beachside Tootsie's in Panama City to the famous Roxy in Hollywood, California. Wow! So, I think everybody's been, been around then. Been around. And uh, of course, Andrew Pope was kind of the Andrew Pope. He was a little bit of a late addition mm-hmm. to be a to be a big uh, big draw for us last time. You know, he's open for. David Allen Coe, Shooter Jennings, John Snyder. John Snyder's released two of Hope songs. What's the other one? I don't know. Okay. <laughs> yeah, right. yeah. I shouldn't have said that without no one knowledge. Right. I just know that Andrew. That, that, that they have said he's got two of them. We're stoned on the one was the mm-hmm. one we know about. Um, they weren't prepared for that. One. <laughs> My bad. Um, but uh, yeah, Andrew's. Uh, I think he went over real well last oh, time, yeah. and his. Uh, be more of a little party atmosphere, sing uh, as much a songwriter series. Don't worry about talking as much. It's time to sing along if you know. And of course, he'll do all kinds of covers of Hank and Alabama and mm-hmm. everybody. Then Brandon Martin, I'm excited to see. Uh, well, like I said on the show a couple weeks ago, and I was talking to Rye's wife. Uh, she said, Hey, we can bring Brandon Martin with us. He's Rye's good buddy. And they do a lot of writing together. And she sent me the video link to Warm Glass of Whiskey, mm-hmm. which I showed yeah. you and Josh. I've come to like this song called The Low Moaning Blues. Well, that last little, like, 45 seconds, he just goes nuts mm-hmm. singing and just, you can tell that you can hear the grit in, it, in him. So, uh, look forward to hearing him. I've never seen him live uh, or anything about him mm-hmm. until, <laughs> until uh, Brandy told me about him. Look like a mountain man. Mm-hmm. Yep. Then Brother Rains, of course. Oh, of course, Brother Rains. So, they'll... Uh, I mean, you know, their work speaks for themselves. They've been around forever. Mm-hmm. And, you know, all so, that people that's played all over the place. Yeah. yeah they're still doing a residency at uh, Hard Rock. Hard Rock and uh, in, uh, Pigeon Forge and Old Red and Gatlinburg. They're regulars there. Um, and Mike DeMeza. So I, I I missed last week here. To go see Mike Thorne. Yes. Two weeks. Was it two weeks ago? Last week. No, it was two weeks ago. So we hadn't recorded in three weeks? Apparently now. not. Hmm. Okay. Uh, I don't know. Anyway, we, yeah. uh, maybe, either, either way. Yeah. Uh, so about Mike, how talented he is. People up there were like, who is this guy? And I was like, hey, buddy Mike from Hendersonville. He'll be at the Music Fest. People there had already mm-hmm. bought tickets. They're like, I don't know anybody can go from country to a rock song like that. And I was like, you really want to be impressed? Watch this. Yeah. So I left the little bar area and walked by the microphone and I said, strawberry wine, you ain't shit. <laughs> he looked at me and said, really? 20 seconds later, strawberry yeah. wine. I ain't talking about one chord, one verse, the, the whole, whole thing. whole song. Strawberry wine. How talented he is right oh, there. Fantastic. So, I listened to that uh, 
I listened to that e- uh, little LP you put out yeah. again the other day. It's got like four songs on it. So good. All of his songs are so good. I left my phone somewhere. I feel like I'm naked right now, so I don't know what in the hell. He's got a 10 song. He's got a 10 song CD now, Al. Really? He, that he had in November. Anybody that loves old school country music will love Andrew Pope. And then when you when you talk about like Rod Davis, the common thing is he just played up here at Sulphur Creek Friday, mm-hmm. and I had to call a high school football game where I would have been there. But his new single, King Me. Mm-hmm. Then, he's, of course, he's got the. One of his biggest songs, of course, Blue Jeans is one of his biggest songs. Rod Davis, everybody says, how is that boy not on the radio? It just ain't their time. Yeah. It ain't. The perfect, I mean, a great sound, a great look, mm-hmm. you know, I mean, charisma, personable person, uh, you know, but their their loss is our gain because, yeah. you know, a lot more easy to get. So I, I'm excited. I'm excited about the lineup from top to bottom, and there's no bottom to me right. necessarily. You know, I'm mm-hmm. just somebody's got to start, and somebody's got to finish. Mm-hmm. And uh, luckily, I don't think there's a lot of egos going on on this. So we'll figure out where to where to go with it. But uh, but not what I, what I was getting at with with all the lineup. Uh, somebody actually messaged me and said, "So you want to make me famous?" Or and it kind of just rubbed me the wrong way. Right. I would I, I can't almost say pissed off because I'm pretty laid back enough not to get pissed off. Right. I'm like, who are you? Or who who do you work for? Are you work are you are you big machine records uh, talent scout now? <laughs> right. Like you know, and I said, who would you like? Yeah. And they said, well, we thought maybe Jamie Johnson. I said, he's at Brushy Mountain a week before, drink enough moonshine from Arno's, mm-hmm. and then go up to Brushy Mountain and pretend he's in North Springs on team because I got a friend <laughs> who's a promoter who gets him every year for fifty thousand. Yeah, I don't have Barry Kennedy's money. I got Dustin Kennedy's money. Okay. Right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we're not getting Jamie Johnson. As much as I love Jamie Johnson, one of my top five musicians probably of all time, it's just mm. silly. I don't think, Lucas, some people really have a, a, a clear thought process of like how much musicians cost. Because these guys they've never heard of, they ain't cheap either <laughs> sometimes, you know? Yeah. And I, I just, and it's no, no shot to anybody. It's just, I just don't think people realize. I put a post on Facebook, and I know people were being funny about like, I said, who would a realistic person you'd like to see? And I said, Jason Eady, not withstanding because he can't come. Mm-hmm. And I said, and some people started mentioning Ward Davis, which is which is a feasible, like he's a gettable person. He lives in Jackson County, mm-hmm. you know, and I've already talked to his to his uh, people, just not for this show. Right. So I said, well, maybe not for this show. The next few answers I got were Garth Brooks and Eric Church, yeah. which obviously was a joke. Mm-hmm. I don't know those guys were joking. Somebody said Cody Jinx. I don't know that that was a joke or not because I don't think people realize how much Cody's really blown up. Right. When the promoter I know says, "Well, I missed the boat on Cody Jinx because I can't afford him." That's pretty bad if he's getting fifty grand for Jamie Johnson. Jamie Johnson. So I, you know, I don't know numbers. I don't know what's what's real, what's not real. But then somebody said Gary Allen, and I said, "I don't." I, I said, God, I love that. Mm-hmm. I, said, I just don't think that's the affordable cost. He said, "You might be surprised." And I said, "Well, I might be." Yeah. But I know no, what, probably not. <laughs> yeah, I mean, probably not. And, I, and like I said, I'm not, I'm not saying anything bad one way mm. or the other. I just, I don't know. I'm not made out of money. Right. <laughs> I mean, I just, mm-hmm. uh, these people are way more expensive than. I remember, like when James run Wooly Bullies, and I try to get people like, like the level of like a Cody Canada, she was in that mm-hmm. level, and they were they weren't crazy crazy. Mm-hmm. You know, if you were a big time promoter that, that lived in an area that had a lot of people streaming through there, mm-hmm. support, you know, probably a good deal. But one thing I've always tried to do with my shows is keep the ticket prices affordable mm-hmm. $25. Mm-hmm. Or what, seven hours music? Pretty good deal. Yeah. So I just laughed at the pose. I mean, like, there were a lot, lot of great suggestions. And I think Gary Allen was a great suggestion. Mm-hmm. I just don't think I can afford it. Right. <laughs> you know? Uh-huh. So. Um, but you're doing yourself a disservice, really, if if you don't come check some of these guys out. Uh-huh. I mean, God's sakes, man, it's 2020. What do you what we what we've been doing since March? There ain't no shows, right? I mean, I, I'm I'm this close to Randy Burgle saying I'm doing I'm doing ACDC tribute band in my front yard. <laughs> I'm gonna grab a chair with bells yeah. on and be like all our dirty deeds done dirt cheap. Uh-huh. And Randy Burgle, right? Put it. So I, I just hey. I think you guys will be very, very entertained if you come down. The ticket sales are moving well. Mm-hmm. 
Um, what time? What time are the gates open? So if the show's starting at two, what time can you? I say start people rolling in at one, one thirty. I mean, twelve one. Twelve one. I'm, I'll be there all all day. Right. Um, one more time. Uh, tickets are on eventbrite.com. Um, twenty five dollars, thirty dollars the day of the event. If you, so, if you wait, and you don't order online because the registration for tickets will be closed at ten that morning. So if you don't get them by ten o'clock day of. Mm -hmm. Well, I don't know if Eventbrite may charge them. They charge thirty dollars the day of. So it's early. It's best just to get them early because I'm somewhat limiting. I was just going to open it up, but really we need to be a little conscious of everything. So get your tickets now. Don't don't wait around if you can help it. You get your tickets. Um, do have a rough draft of a t-shirt and a koozie we're selling. So uh, I can accept PayPal dre kennedy eighty three at hotmail dot com. Venmo dre kennedy eighty three. Check cash. Apple Pay, Facebook Pay. <laughs> no cards, though. Yeah, no cards. Uh, so, unless the, I mean, we'll have some extras the day of the event, but I like to get a pre-sale going on. Right. Early on. Real good, real good. Benny Print and Dots of Branch hooking us up. So. Now, what about food today, though? You know who's coming. I know who's J coming. JB's Barbecue. Now, it's going to be a more simpler menu this time. It's not going to be ribs and loaded baked potato. You know, we just, me and Barry and Jeanette got together and looked at the, the, Totality of everything. Just, you know, nobody wants to be packing a plate around in the right. field. So we're going to do sandwiches. We're just going to do sandwiches and hot dogs. Maybe. Hot dogs. The bear sent, you know, mm -hmm. shredded sandwiches, chips, drinks. Mm -hmm. They'll have all your dr chips and drinks now. What's the cost? What's the cost of the uh, chips drinks? Right? You know, they hadn't even said, but I would, mm -hmm. I, you know. Bring some cash. Bring, they'll have car accessibility, but best cash. Yeah. Cash food would. You know, limited access down to card readers in North Springs, Tennessee. Yeah. So, um, cash is king on, on that situation. But, um, uh, oh, uh, trying to think of sponsors. We've got, um, Dent Force, which is Hunter Caps, um, Making Collision, Brandon Gregory, Duffer Excavating, Brent Duffer, Fox Florist and Gifts, Wanda Lynn. Johnson Auto Parts with uh, Lisa Fox, Brenda Keith from Don Franklin Chevrolet, Clay County Farm Supply is uh, donating the porta potties, Steel House uh, Recording Studio, Andy Smith doing all the all the music, all the sound that day. Um, Winona Thomas, my aunt, is donating some uh, money. I asked her if her employer would donate, and she said I will. <laughs> so uh, that's that's our. Sponsors right now on JB's Barbecue, of course. Uh, and and Brandy and Jackson County Council. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Chamber of Commerce. Chamber Jordan, Commerce. Jordan Hunter and uh, Randy Hetty helped me out. Mayor Randy Hetty helped me out quite a bit with them to donate the mask mm -hmm. and everything that we're going to have. We're going to have hand sanitizer stations up everywhere. So we're ready. We're ready. Uh, you know, if you are look, looking to sponsor, if anybody else is looking to sponsor, here's this. We're trying to get things wrapped up pretty soon. I can start getting the flyers and the banners. Everything or the sponsorships, all your all your sponsorships will be displayed. We're gonna talk about it on the podcast. I put it on Facebook, of course. So what day? What day are we? October tenth. I guess October it's pretty 10th. essential. Mm -hmm. October tenth, two o'clock. Uh, there's another big one that day uh, in Jackson County. I'd be uh, Jamie Daly's having his Flagler Jam. Really? Up on his uh, property in Jackson County, and uh. Kind of elephant in the room situation. Everybody else is a lot more fired up about him having this event. Now. <laughs> you <laughs> yeah. get what I'm saying? Yeah. Now, did had he announced that prior? Uh, what happened there? So here's the deal. Here's the deal. If I'm being honest, uh, he announced it after we did. But in fairness to him, he already had an event, and I feel like we need to talk about this because a lot of people are going, "I can't believe he decided to have an event the same day as yours." Well, first off, he's Jamie Daly, Daly events, and he's a Superstar. Right. Do whatever he wants to do. I mean, he plays on the Opry all uh -huh. the time, you know? Um, so when I asked the county about using the stage, they let me know that Jamie had already had a show that was planned for that day. Uh -huh. A big, big deal. It's going to be really awesome. Um, and I said, well, I'm not really married to this day. Mm -hmm. I said, but it's a working date for now. I said, because I want my dad to be there, and I'm in a wedding the next weekend. So we were just trying not to have any conflicting things. Mm -hmm. Like, I think they're probably maybe working on stuff in the future. And I said, no, I really didn't know, but I said, if it's canceled. And I guess everybody kind of assumed I was piggybacking off that event getting canceled mm -hmm. using that date. 
hundred percent pure coincidence that I just right because when we done the one in Herman Springs four years ago, it was hotter than I'll get out. Yeah. So I thought October's a cool, you know, is a cooler weather, better date. Mm-hmm. So it, it was hundred percent, uh, you know, coincidence. So then we announced, and I go through the first couple acts going on, and, and Jamie announces his new show, and I have so many people call me like, "Oh, come on now." Like, why would he have it on the same day? Uh-huh. My answer to everybody is like, oh, that's cool. Yeah. Good for him. Mm-hmm. And I said, it's completely two different things. Yeah. And I said, but, I said, in fairness to him, because a lot of people didn't know, I said, he had a date already reserved for Jackson County on that day. Mm-hmm. And I said, I'm sure his band took off. You know, other mm-hmm. other bands probably took off to have that show. So they were, it was a broad picture of an event they were in. Mm-hmm. You, know, that, you know, they were looking at big, big crap. Mm-hmm. What he's doing now, he's doing 150 people total. Oh yeah, at his house mm-hmm. on his property there. I mean, it's like, like I, I wish him nothing but the best, and I don't have to wish him nothing but the best because he's already sold out one show, right? And he added a second show. Uh, I just thought it was the right thing to do. I advertised for him on Facebook. Last thing he needs is my advertisement right. for my 1,500 friends on Facebook or whatever I got. Mm-hmm. You know, um, but I thought, man, this is this is the right thing to do. I put, I advertise mine. Mm-hmm. So here's who we got. Here's the time. I said, also, if this ain't your cup of tea, Jamie Daly, Daly and Vincent, they're having their event. You know, give all the details. Tickets go on sale today. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, I'm not, I think it's really cool for the county to have all that many options on one yeah. day. Everybody else, think, you know how people want to oh, stir yeah. the pot. I can't believe he's having, well, he already had planned. Yeah. He already planned a day. And he's Jamie Daly. And he's Jamie, I mean, I'm, I, I saw him the other night. And I, I, he was on the phone, and I, I just kind of waved at him. But yeah, I mean, if, if somebody's offended about two sh- concerts on the same day, it's not me. Right. <laughs> just want to clear that up. Right. <laughs> a lot of people, not other people, maybe, but I think it's cool. Like I said, it's hold on the show. It's bluegrass music. And it's, I was saying there's not not there's some crossover, but not a lot. I mean, there'll be crossover just because of the like vicinity, but other than that, it's kind of kind of it, right? Yeah. It shows it for. I think he added a 12 o'clock show. So I don't know how late he's wanting to go and how late he'll go with his shows. I have mm-hmm. no idea. But wish him the best. And yeah. I, I, you know, like I said, I think we're going to do fairly, fairly good on our own. Yeah. I'm not a, I'm not a member of the Grand Ole Opry <laughs> and don't have any, anybody playing that is, but there's a lot of talent. Okay. Now it's going to sound a little different. I don't really know what was going on there, but we, we were just, it. we were just in the middle of, Having a having a good time and then kind of realized that stuff wasn't happening. Same room. Same, same room. Same room. Same same equipment. <laughs> so hell if I know, folks. But apologize for that first uh, little echoey. I'll take you out. There'll be some gaps where music was prior, but uh, probably couldn't have played it anyway. I was a little while we were playing it. I was thinking, oh, we probably shouldn't be doing this. Yeah. So go listen to the, the songs if you want to listen to them. Go listen to Andrew Pope. Everything's changing with me. Ry Davis. They all know my name. Brandon Martin, the Low Moaning Blues, and Cherokee Upton. Cherokee Upton, we played some of her stuff. I mean, we played Josh McCreary's uh, from his Facebook page, uh, Josh McCreary Music, Matt Mayberry Music on Facebook, mm-hmm. uh, Mike DeMeza, Whiskey, Did You Miss Me? We played clips of all these guys. Um, so Vanessa Rogers, she's got stuff on her Facebook. Chris Rains has some stuff on the Brother Rains, but I mean, bro- if you're around this area, you know. You know, brother, you know, Rains. brother Rains and Chris Rains, and so anyway, from the, and I hope ever, I hope we answered all your questions for North Strange Music Fest. I mean, that's just message me. I mean, just get the ticket sales moving. If you want t-shirts and koozies, order them in advance. Some will be at the show, but I like to get them get everybody paid up to match what they're wanting. So when I order these, then I'll have I'll have extras for the show. So uh, I got to pull out an old accounting prey. Uh, one of my uh. One of my old uh, Indian voices. Yeah, never gets old. Why would it? Where'd you Where'd you pull it? Well, out I was at work today eating lunch. Mm-hmm. And a guy comes over to me, he, younger guy in our company. He goes, "I've always heard about these DK pranks." Yeah. <laughs> he said, "I'd like to experience one." And I said, "Is Mindy at her desk?" He said, "Yeah." I said, "All right." So I got my cell phone, blocked her number, block, blocked a uh, direct line. She goes, "Accounting." This is Mindy. Hello, Mindy. I am calling on a part of. I am needing to do something with the International Affairs Department. Um. Okay, that's probably Renee, and she's out today. 
Okay, um, do you do you not have the capabilities of doing the same job as Miss Renee Gentry Lackey? I'm sorry, is it Ray, Gen, R, Renee Lackey or Renee Gentry? Which which is correct? Um, it's 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 Renee Lackey. Okay, I am needing to know something about the international affairs, Miss Mindy. Yeah, it's 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 Renee. Uh, that's <laughs> that, and she she's out today, so that. Okay, um, so you're not very much of help. Um, <laughs> I see. I will need to speak with someone. Um, sir, sir, who are you calling from? I said, um, it doesn't matter as far as this. You do not have the capabilities to assist me. Apparently, Miss uh, Renee is the only one who is uh, available. Is there anyone else in the accounting department who may be able to help me? Because I am needing Miss Renee, apparently, and she is out on vacation. <laughs> Uh, yeah, just a second. So I get transferred. Mm-hmm. I said, hey, it's uh, Robert in the county. Uh, hello, I was looking for Miss Mindy Carroll. He said, uh, I think you were just speaking to Mindy Carroll. Uh, no, she kept telling me her name was Renee. <laughs> and I was actually needing to speak to Miss Mindy. Oh, oh, yeah. Oh, okay, my bad. Let me, let me transfer you over. <laughs> Hi, this is Mindy. Hello, I was looking for Renee <laughs> Gentry. <laughs> Uh, I told you, uh, um, sir, uh, she is on vacation. No, you told me, you have told me that your name was what? My name's Mindy. No, you said I need to, that Mindy was on vacation and I need to speak to Renee. Oh my God, sir. No, I'm Mindy. What, what are you calling about exactly? Okay, are you ready? Can you take note, please, for Renee when she comes into office tomorrow? Yes, I'm ready. I am calling about the uh, in, uh, <laughs> and such. Sir, you're going to have to repeat that. Your phone your phone cut out as soon as... Oh, I'm sorry. I apologize for the inconvenience. The actual reason upon my call today is that I'm calling about the... Uh, it, it, un, do you understand? S- sir, I am so sorry to ask you to repeat. Your phone keeps cutting out. Mindy's the sweetest person on right. green earth. Uh-huh. I said... Oh, I am so, so sorry for the inconvenience, my friend. I will tell you once more, and hopefully my cell phone will um, work. I am calling about the... the uh, do you think you can help me with this? <laughs> Sir? <laughs> okay, it's obvious that you do not have the capabilities of helping me. <laughs> she hangs up on me. Yeah. She finally, she finally just like... There, she puts me on speaker, I think. I hang up on her. Yeah. So I walk up and Ben's like in stitches. And I walk over and uh she she and I was like, Hey guys, what's up, Mindy? Hey. And Robert's at his desk and I go in and talk to him. I was like, What's up, man? How you doing? Well, you decide for football, blah, blah, blah. He goes, We just had a call in here. It was crazy. I don't know. Mindy was pretty fired up. I was like, Did it sound like this? <laughs> he goes, Are you kidding me? <laughs> <laughs> so I walk in there and I and I said, Listen, listen, listen. And Mindy's like telling Ben like word for word. Yeah, then he said this. Then he said this. Uh-huh. I was like, dude, it, 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 it's, it's, it's Renee, and she's out. She was all flustered. <laughs> I walked out. I was like, hey, man. I said, hey, Mandy, where's Renee at? Uh, she's on vacation today. And I walked back there. She's like, what? You didn't believe me? You had to walk back there? I was like, oh, sorry. She goes, I said, have you been very busy and bitter today? She goes, oh, my God. Are you serious? She goes, why can you talk like exactly like that? <laughs> oh, mate. What is, so what, 25 years worth of doing that? Is that what you're, where you're at now? Probably. Yeah. You should have told her, said, well, I've been practicing for 25 years. <laughs> Stupid. I grew up on these days. No, no, no. Just a little, lunch, just a little lunch prank. Why not? You know, I feel it's like so damn serious in those places. Anyway, you need a little levity every now and then. A little bit, right? Why not? We, uh, I feel like I need to apologize. I, For? We, we crapped on a movie several, several episodes back. On, on a movie? Yeah. Okay. Which one? I think you crapped on it worse than I did, but I, I think I think you. Well, it's Varsity it, Blues. I don't know if I did or not. I think you, you did. <laughs> I brought it up, and then you took it to like we were we were making fun of the accents, the fake accents. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think we I think we said it didn't hold up because I believe Cookie or somebody like that frowned down upon us for us talking about the masterpiece that is Varsity Blues. Yeah, I think Cookie it, it probably hadn't watched it back recently. I'm gonna tell you, 
I'm, Might be I'm, stand, I'm standing differently again because it was on television the other night, and I and I watched it. Mm-hmm. I loved it all over again. Yeah, I, I found myself laughing like it was the first time I'd seen it. Really? It had been so long. The accents are bad. Yeah, they are. But man, if you get over the accents, the the rest of the show's pretty good. How did we ever even try to think we were talking about varsity blues? I don't know. It was pretty good. They, uh, uh, she's a ten. A 10. An F and 10. She's an F and 10. She was a 10. Miss De- Davis was a 10. Yeah. Gar- Scott Gar- Conn. What the f- is that? Twigger. Yeah. Think you're going to like prison? <laughs> Enjoy prison? Wainers on the glass at the... I can't ever think of what he said. The Lana Club. Lana's Club. Wainers on the glass at the Lana's Club. Lana's Club. Something like that, isn't it? I don't remember. I don't remember. What... Man, the, the whipped cream. Whipped cream bikini. Yeah. Making the coach. Like, you think players get coaches fired now? They got Bud Kilmer the hell up out that dressing room. <laughs> Dawson from Dawson's Creek was all up in Kilmer's face. It's like, who don't want to live that life being those kids that were just, you're the you're king dick of your little town. Little town. Tweeter still in the cop, cop car, car, Brad Craggett style. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Jump through the one. Has there ever been a better portrayal of Brad Craighead in a movie you've ever seen in your entire life? Than Tweeter. Than Tweeter. That's it. That's him. If I have a friend that was a tweeter, it's Brad Craighead. Uh, Scott Kahn possibly talked to Brad Craighead to figure out how to play that character. <laughs> what's they call character? Uh, what's it called when you get, when uh, you get into the role? Uh, well, a character actor, I guess. Or uh, uh, there's some, there's yeah. a, there's a term for it, but yeah. Um, I don't I, know. I, just, I loved it. I loved it all over again when I well, watched it, and I, and I uh, couldn't believe that we even halfway criticized it. Well, you know my thoughts on. Uh, Looking back on stuff, I do. Yeah, yeah, I do. Nostalgia. God knows, I do. Yeah, I'm not a nostalgic person, so I, I don't know. Well, I didn't look back at it in nostalgia. I, I just I liked it for what it was. Twenty mm-hmm. years later, and I, and I couldn't believe I dog. I might watch it again and say maybe next time in th- four weeks, whenever we do another one of these, I'll. It's the dad. It, it's it's uh James James Van Tim Der McGraw. Beek's, no, no, no. That's Friday Night Lights. Oh, James Vanderbeek's dad, the one that says, "Come on." They'll fire at effing pigskin. The mom's like, come on, Johnny, you can do it. You can do it. Johnny Moxon. That's that's the scenes that I cringe at when I hear the parent, come on, Johnny, you can do it. Yeah, I don't like it. I know. And then the girlfriend, Johnny Moxon, star quarterback. Mm-hmm. But by God, if you just look at the storyline in general, you, you got kids raising hell, chasing girls. You got the little sketchy girls that went from the quarterback and the quarterback tore up his knee. So she's going to go for the, for the backup quarterback like girls do. You know, yeah, I'll watch it again. I- I'll watch it. You got again. strip clubs. There's no way a little town like that had a strip club in where the, the high school kids could have stayed out all night. Yeah. Okay, maybe there is. Maybe there is. Here's the real story. There's no way a small town like that has a strip club and you don't know Miss Davis from school is a stripper there. Oh yeah. Somebody's <laughs> been there and be like, you know, Miss Davis, Davis stripping. Yeah. yeah. Well, well, Unless Miss Davis just got to town. Yeah. You know, was that her first night? I don't know. Yeah. Maybe it was. Maybe it wasn't. Maybe you. Maybe the night she first strode in, the whole football team did too. And eh, eh, eh. and there's no way in real life Tweeter don't get that. <laughs> oh, no, Tweeter. Yeah, that's in that's, the nineties. That's a del- that's, <laughs> yeah. That's a, that's a deleted scene that Varsity yeah. Blues didn't have. Twe- yeah. Tweeter had Miss Davis. Yeah. Okay. Oh yeah. Yeah. Tweeter pulls out his six pack. Miss Davis. Miss Davis is. Dumb. It's over. Yeah. It's over. It's a lifetime movie waiting to happen at that point. Yeah. Yeah. Spin off. There's a there's a court case coming. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. I don't know. I'll watch it again. I, I I doubt my opinion on it changing. Mine did. Okay. I don't think I had a bad opinion, but I just think that we were I think we took we took it too hard just because it had bad really bad acting in it. Just the parent just the parts like that, just all the riddle rednecks. Mm-hmm. But it is Texas. I mean Texas does have rednecks. Yeah. Yeah. So, not that Tennessee doesn't. Yeah. Especially where we're living right now. Yeah. They're everywhere. everywhere. (laughs) You know, so. uh, Oh, Jack turned one this week. Oof. Baby Jack. Mm -mm Mm-mm-mm. I got two stories of how my kid's personality is so different. You know, Bayless has become such a cult hero on this show. Mm -hmm. You know, got Sweet Camden, who's the sweetest child ever. Then you got my child, who... Drinks hot, Isn't. hot and warm milk. Mm-hmm. He's been better lately, but it's just the difference in personality in him. Mm-hmm. I was putting my shoes on to go to work the other day. I was in the living room, and I heard a boom and a, and a crash and a 
glass mm-hmm. or ceramic ended up being. And I was like, nobody's crying away screaming. I don't know. This probably ain't good. Right. So I walked in. Lindsay's like into disbelief. Jack is taking something. He's so stout. He put over. He pulled over a pack safe, mm-hmm. and luckily he missed mm-hmm. it. He was to the side of it. God, so it, it didn't come. It was about four feet tall. Yeah, had a big ceramic bowl on top of it. That was my mom's. Uh-huh. So the pie safe come down, fo- straight him. forward. Uh-huh. He was Thank to the God. side. The ceramic thing busted in a million pieces. He's just looking around like this right here, looking up in there, like what happened. <laughs> You know, and Lindsay's like, oh, my God. I was like, you know, just everybody was relieved that the, the, the damn, baby wasn't the baby crushed was under the pie safe, yeah. Right. So I get in the shower. Ten minutes later, I'm hearing, I'm so tired of doing this with you in the morning. Rah, 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 rah. They were screaming and hollering, and I went, oh, my God. And I got out, got my towel, walked in there, and I said, what the hell's going on in here? <laughs> Bayless wants to wear ball shorts. And I said, Okay. He's going to wear those khaki shorts, Dustin. I don't want to wear these khaki shorts. Take these shorts off me. I don't like them. I don't like them. They don't fit good. I said, this is what we're fighting about. This is, yeah, khaki shorts. This is what we're fighting about. Dustin, he wears ball shorts every morning. And I went, he's four. Yeah, I mean, I he's, he's a, four. He's a little kid. I mean. She goes, I know. but He's he, going to be playing. He you has know. so many nice clothes. He's got to wear some of these before he outgrows them. All he wants to do is wear Nike shorts. And I went, in fairness, when I met you and we weren't going on a date or anything, all you had was slime of ball shorts, <laughs> slime of softball t-shirts. Yeah. You know, you know what a four-year-old kid's going to do in the day? He's going to play. He's going to be in the dirt. He's going to stomp in some mud puddles. You know what them khaki shorts are going to be? Another fight when he gets home. Yeah. <laughs> You know, he's gonna say, "Mom, I know I'm getting these muddy. Yeah. I know you're gonna beat my ass for this later. Yeah, but I'm four and I'm gonna do it." <laughs> so I said, "I whispered to her because I didn't want to do it right in front of him." Oh you know, yeah. You, you, you just, well, you got to. You're dividing at that point. Yeah. And I said, "I feel like we should pick our battles at this point. You're gonna be late for work because you just won't put damn ball shorts on him." I feel like it's not a fight worth having. Yeah. Why don't you just mind your own business then? I feel like I, said, I am minding my business. I said, "I get it. I get it." But now you're you're pissed off. He's pissed off. I'm not in the best mood because I've had to hear you rummaging, rummaging around in here about khaki shorts versus ball shorts for the four year old. Uh-huh. <laughs> you know, uh-huh. and uh, he, he he wore the khaki shorts. Really? Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. Come home ruined. I bet. No, nah, not that day. But I mean, you know, she. I said, well, how long did he cry on the way to town this morning? She the whole said, way. He, you know, she said he stopped. Once he got in the vehicle, so it's just huh. just difference in personality. Jack, yeah. Jack damn near killed himself and didn't even know it. <laughs> yeah, Bayless put on a pair of khaki shorts and was murdered. And uh, it, then, you, we we had a family family date day. We went to Cookville yesterday. I ate out at a restaurant and everything. We did too. Where'd you eat? Uh, oh, Charlie. Same here. Really? No, nah, Cheddar's. Oh, okay. But, well, <laughs> we went to a Red Lobster first, and uh, they said the wait's gonna be about forty five minutes. I said, I drove out of a drive through because $11 food. I'm going to walk out of this place. I ain't waiting. And uh, so we went to Charlie's. And when we pulled in to, when we first pulled in to Red Lobster, Eli had pooped through his diaper Oof. out the pant leg and into the car seat. Oh, God, that's the worst. And we had to pick him up, had it all over his feet, hands, all over my hands. It was everywhere. Mm. Right? I had to wipe the seat out and everything. You know I, what? I'd have got a new car seat. That kid, he's happy as a lark. Didn't care a bit. No, he shit himself. Yeah. She felt better. Have, have you, have you yeah. put, don't you feel better? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He's just happy as a lark. And then Camden, poor, poor little Camden's got the stomach constitution of, of me. He he goes, <laughs> is, uh, <laughs> is, did, he, did, he, did it come out? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, buddy. He, he pooped out. It's, it's in his car seat. Mm-mm. Oh, mm mm. Mm-mm. Yeah, I'd have went straight to Walmart, bought Threw that car, car seat, seat away, and got a new one. I would have. <laughs> I can't handle it. I can't handle it. Oof. Ugh. It don't bother me anymore. It's disgusting. It is though. It is disgusting. Like it don't get in my stomach or anything. It don't gag me. It's nasty. I just uh, I put a t shirt over my nose. <laughs> really? And then just hope for the best. Turn my head. I I changed a diaper the other day, and it was it was top between the three kids. It was top. It was top five. Oof. It's top five of mm-hmm. three one three kids I've ever changed. Mm-hmm. I had to, Jack was packing that punch. 
Mm. Jack likes to eat, though. You know, yeah, these little kids of ours, he, they're some eaters, buddy. He, he almost weighs more than Bayless. Really? Bayless weighs 32 pounds. Four years old, weighs 32 pounds. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Well, that's about where Camden's at. I don't know if Camden's that big or not. Jack's going to be at least 250. <laughs> oh, yeah, by yeah. By the time he's 12. I'm so... I don't. I'm not. I'm not saying that I'm like starving Camden to death, but I'm so scared that he's going to wind up fat like me that I'm just like I'll slap a cookie straight out of his hand and say, "Don't eat that. You don't like that." Well, I'm just. I try to kill mine with cruelness, right? Not kindness is necessarily. Why well, don't come up and hit me with the old? They call it bean bean dip a little bit with a little hit underneath your tit a little yeah. bit. Yeah. And I'll just flip his say genetics. <laughs> Camden. <laughs> Camden hit me with that the other day. I was giving him a shower the other morning. It was pretty early. I still didn't have a shirt on yet. I've been over in the floor to do something. He reached under and gave me old tit slap and said, Is there milk? <laughs> is his brother's milk in there? <laughs> <laughs> and the thing was, he's three. So it wasn't it wasn't he wasn't playing some game. This was a legitimate question that Camden had. Oh, a tit. There's a tit. <laughs> His brother's milking that like mama has. I said, no. I said, and if I have to leave him in the shower by himself, I have to make him sing a song for me while I'm where I can hear him the whole time. I said, no, no. Hey, do me a favor. Go ahead and sing a song real quick. And I jumped up and run, put a shirt on real quick. And I had come back in, had a Batman shirt on or something. He goes, what you put a shirt on for, Daddy? I said. I, you know, uh, just, it was just time, but it just, just time. You've already, you've knocked my, yeah. what little bit of self-confidence I might've had. Mm. You trashed it. You drowned it in that, you drowned it in that tub right there. Uh, well, I, I'll tell Wayne all the time. He'll make fun of me all the time. I said, I'll tell you this. I said, uh, I was skinnier than you. <laughs> at your age. At your age. Uh-huh. I said, and my parents are skinnier than your parents. <laughs> I said, so good luck good luck when you're thirty six, Chief. <laughs> here's the road here's the road that you're on, brother. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, play yeah. play games with me. No, yeah. Don't think I won't remember when you're thirty six. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. Just a few years down the road and you're gonna be going. <laughs> what you got <laughs> what you got there, son? Nice tits, son. Nice tits. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, then this the, yesterday morning we were laying around and Jack was on the back side of the couch with me and he pulled on the curtain a little bit uh-huh. and I just said, "What are you doing? Get off that curtain!" Well, Barry Kennedy said, "What are you doing, Barry? Uh-huh. Yeah, get off that!" And then his little lip just quivered a little bit, quivered under, uh, started crying, uh-huh. and he I, he crawled over on the floor, got back to Lindsay, and she said, "Daddy, you hurt his feelings and all that." And I said. Difference being, I said, Jack's got feelings. Uh-huh. I said, Bayless would have laughed at me and rode that son of a bitch all the way down to the <laughs> top to the bottom. It, rode it to the ground. Yeah. They don't give a damn. Yeah. 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 He said, no, nope, watch this. Yeah. But this, Seriously. This is what I'm doing, old man. That is the difference. Old titty man. Here you go. <laughs> <laughs> Tits. Uh, is there milk in them like my man? Gosh. I found something <sighs> equally annoying. Yeah. When we made fun of our our, our uh, segment was a big hit. Which few, one? Few, few weeks ago, we were talking about the car heads digesting all the yeah the, the terminology. Yeah, it's not as as annoying to me. But why do so many people feel the need to put tutorials on YouTube when they're the single most annoying people on the God's green earth? As in, well, sometimes you'll just get like. Hey guys, Steve here. <laughs> Gonna break down how to put a little alternator on your vehicle. Mm. You got that guy? Yeah. Or you're like, hey right, guys, I'm, I'm Jacob. I'm uh, going to show you how to um, change the uh, change the bearings out in your Silverado. You think you can watch that guy for no. 30 minutes? No. Well, first off, you'll get a socket set. Mine is Dewalt brand. Put on a ratchet. Put your socket on the ratchet. Don't forget to pull the cotter pin out. <laughs> Go ahead and. Righty tighty lefty loosey. <laughs> and then go ahead and little, 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 little humor there for let's, you. Let's start taking these busting these nuts loose. That's two. That's two jokes. You know. <laughs> never never mind, that was a little crass. <laughs> so let's go ahead and take this nut off. You know what my favorite kind of tutorial on YouTube is? The one where they don't say anything. If there's any if there's anything that they need to convey They'll point at it, 
and then they'll put some text on the screen, yeah. but you don't have to listen to them talk about it. Yeah, that's all right. I, didn't... I like that. Yeah. A yeah. little music in the background. You know what my favorite sound is, is when somebody's, they're taking a hammer and they're pecking something. And they'll give you like two or three of the real pecks, but then they put it in they put it in fast forward, and you get a oh, it's that's my favorite sound ever when they're pecking in fast forward. Oh, it's my favorite. Mm. I just I, I know we've covered the video game people. I just don't they're all over the top. They're just you're not selling me on anything. Oh. You're just showing me you're just showing me how to take the you know take a rear end off. Show mm-hmm. me how ten windows. Mm-hmm. Show me show me simple stuff. You're yeah, not always simple, but. Well, it's pretty simple, right? Some stuff is. Yeah. Why? Why? I just, I don't, I don't, I don't like over the top. I don't, yes. And you'll look at their page and they might have, you know, they're going to have a whole lot of followers. When who they wants do. to listen to that? Right, if you're voluntarily looking for somebody to listen to, you know, it's not going to be that person, you know. <sighs> Give me a little of it. Give me a little over the top. No, I can't. I don't have over the top in me. You know, I just don't, <laughs> you know. I don't have over the top in me. You know what my favorite thing I've been watching here lately is? No. Building my dream bike. People just buying motorcycles or building my dream X, whatever it is, their dream car or whatever, and they'll do a year's worth of work and fast forward in about seven minutes. That's my favorite. But I, I don't want to hear anybody say anything. I don't want to hear them talk. I don't want to hear your 10 minutes on how you're going to cut the firewall out and move it back. So that you can put the bigger transmission in or the bigger motor or the what this and that. I don't care. Just do it. Just do it and let me see it. I wanna hear the I wanna hear the fast forward cutting of the cutting distance. <laughs> I wanna hear that. That's what I wanna hear. Oh. That's all I want. I don't wanna hear you talking. I don't care what you're saying. Mm-mm. Mm. <laughs> Been watching a lot of people make knives lately. Mm. That sounds mm-hmm. that sounds Riveting. Yeah. <laughs> you know what? There's a lot of heat, beat, heat, beat, heat, beat. And then they'll find a piece of wood and they'll put it on a handle and there's a new knife. Oh. That's about it. I liked it. I like it. I never knew my one of my best friends was so boring. <laughs> you did know it is the yeah. problem. <laughs> You've known me for a long time. You did know that. <laughs> You're watching knife making. Yeah. Yeah. You know what? I'll never watch so a knife flipping video. Never going to watch one of them. Really? I'm not going to watch enough. What if I make you? Well, we might on here, but I'm not going to search it out by myself. There's a whole world of those people. A whole world of knife flippers out there. You know what? One of the dumbest things that you could do is sit around and flip knives and put it on the internet. You're just showing people, say, this This is where my life's at. Well, that's, that's, that's you know, maybe they think that about podcasters. Well, that's true. That's true. But they're wrong, and I'm right. Because <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> knife flipping's stupid. You want to know how removed we are from being single and and uh, worrying about little things. I work with a guy and he just turned twenty one. Oh yeah, and he's as country as cornbread. Uh-huh. We uh, he says we pick at him, uh-huh. but it's just any picking. It's just I like her, mate. You know, yeah. He's, he's, well, he's twenty one. So he he come in there and they said, I can see comfortable. He said, uh, I yeah, I used to like you, son. I. I, I've dated me some women now. Oh, yeah. And Tell I, me about it. I said, well, now, all, it, all, ear, all ears for this. <laughs> yeah. And he said, <laughs> why now? I What I like is these boys from these little towns, and I'm from a little town. He said, uh, they think they got to have them big diesel trucks. Yeah. Oh, sorry, I guess I am not a message here. So they got them diesel trucks. Of course, mm-hmm. they daddies give them give them, them trucks, right. whatever. They didn't. They don't haul nothing. I said, oh yeah, that's a thing. Yeah, they'll pull a thing. Yeah, they, that's that. You know, I've known that you've for got a long time. You've got to pull like thirty six thousand miles a year to justify buying the diesel as opposed yeah. to the gas burner. I, I I don't get it. I don't get it. I think that was behind our time yeah. a little bit. I'm I'm glad that I don't. I didn't have to talk my dad into giving me a diesel truck. Yeah. When gas burners for us just work yeah. perfectly fine. Yeah. Anyway, for the for the purpose of the story, I said, "Oh yeah." He said, "Why well, these old boys? They think they something when they load up these girls and get right around us." And well, unfortunately, right or wrong, some girls are shallow minded like that, <laughs> and, and they like that. and they like that. Mm-hmm. I said, "These dumbass boys wouldn't go do it." Yeah. Oh yeah. You know, I said, "There's a reason they do it because 
the end game strong for him sometimes. <laughs> yeah. He said, oh, I, yeah, I get that, son. You don't know how many women I've loaded up my single cab 5.3 gas burn Silverado I used to have. Well. I said, guarantee it. I don't know it. I tell said, me about tell it. Me about it. Tell me more. I can't wait. He said, why? Oh, I was one night, the old girl loaded up with me. Of course, my dad said, how'd you get that truck so muddy? Yeah. And uh, I said, I'll tell you how I got that dirty little old thing in a tank top short shorts. Wanted to get out with me. Why? I got out and I started I started roping donuts and going through mud holes. And, of course, had some had some beer and stuff with me. Yeah. He said, heck, we stayed out all, all hours of the night. Yeah. And, roping donuts. And he said... <laughs> He said, well, <laughs> he said, how'd you think that turned out? And he said, well, how do you think it turned out? <laughs> and uh, I, said, I wouldn't ask if I knew, big dog. <laughs> tell me about it. <laughs> it gets better. Yeah. He said, I'd go up there to them. To, uh, he said, no, I was from Birdstown. Yeah. He said, I went to. Oh, I guarantee you. <laughs> <laughs> I said, he said, I went up there to Albany. Uh-huh. And uh, he said. And boys hated me up there because I'd go up there in my gas burner. And I'd go up there in my gas burner and they'd have their diesel. And I'd go up there in my gas burner and I'd steal every one of their girls. I said, Mr. Steal Your Girl. Didn't know you had Literally. He said, they hated me so bad. <laughs> he said, I got a sticker. It said, locally hated. Local. How'd you know? Because I've seen that stupid no ass sticker everywhere. Are you serious? I'm serious. Well, he had it. And yeah. He said locally hated. And I lost it. Yeah. I said locally hated. He goes, well, but that all changed now. <laughs> and I said, you ain't locally hated no more. He goes, I got me a woman. Yeah. I said, well, did you? I'm good. Good for you. He goes, oh, yeah, she's a lot older than I am. She's 27 year old. <laughs> oh, Lord. And I said, oh, cougar. Mm-hmm. And he said, well. We's, a, we's there one night, and here's old girl coming up. Mm-hmm. And I said, oh, man, this ain't good. And uh, I said, oh, shit. Mm-hmm. Well. She said, hi, how are you? I said, well, I'm all right. And I was trying to blow her off, you know, best I could. Well, she kept on talking. Well, my woman went on, said, who's that? I just had somebody that I knowed a long time for. I know you. Let's uh-huh. put it like that right there. <laughs> and he said, son, he said, I'd get rid of that truck. Uh-huh. Yeah. And I said, well, why is that? Why? Well, number woman just didn't like it. I said, well, you laid some other women down in it. I said, <laughs> yeah. she couldn't even stand the thought of being in that passenger seat. Didn't no, want it. No one, every woman in three adjoining counties has been in that truck, yeah. son. Well, I just miss it. I seen my truck the other day, and you I said, did it have the locally hated? No, they took it off. I wished I still had that sticker. Man, I had everything. I had them wheels. I had a lift kit. I had that locally hated sticker. I had my Snapchat username on the back glass. Oh, I guarantee you. I guarantee you. I said, why wouldn't you? Why wouldn't you put it there? Snapchat. Oof. That'd be like me and you riding around in high school with our MSN mes- Messenger login. With our right? AOL. With the AOL handle. Instant Messenger handle on it. Yeah. Oh, L, I, L. I, Hickman 32. Oh, all, all day long. I've seen that locally hated sticker, and they'll have D Kizzle O two. They'll have the uh, the little Instagram uh, camera and their name out from wow, it. The little bird, that? the little Twitter. I was coming up through. Uh, oh my god! It was in Cookville the other day, and there was a uh, two or three trucks in a line had their little convoy happening. Yeah, mm. locally hated. So you have I've never oh, seen it, I've never seen the sticker or the people putting their social media handles on there. I've seen I've seen locally hated stickers in Hermitage Springs. Stop it. Yeah. Yeah, that's stupid. <laughs> that's stupid. Locally hated. Nobody even knows you, motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> oh you ain't got, nobody knows you. I like the kid. Yeah. I like the kid. I boy. do too. I like the story from I'll, the kid. Yeah, he's got stories like that for days. Mm. Days, days, days. Mm-hmm. This dude goes a hundred everywhere he goes. <laughs> you know, he's all, he said, "Oh God, here's another good one." And he said, "Well, I had to show out yesterday a little bit." Why wouldn't you? I have? said, "Please tell, please tell me uh-huh. the details." Locally hated hero legend, you. He <laughs> yeah. goes, "Why well, now? Well, he's up there on one eleven. Mm-hmm. Old boy coming to red light. Now I don't know what it was about it. He drives a Silverado yeah. with his company. He has a little." business of his own uh-huh. on the side yeah and it, he said well he said i don't know what it was about it then boys pulled up and they revved up at me i looked back at them said, no i ain't gonna fool with them uh-huh. he said well they rev back up me again i looked at my woman i said what do you think she goes it's up to you <laughs> I said well i took that as a 
I took that as an okay to, by God, race them. And, uh, hell, we took <laughs> off. We took off, and they got up to 85. Well, I thought, well, hell, that ain't nothing. So I hit another gear there, and I got up, son. I was, well, let's just say I was going 110 mile an hour down 111. <laughs> I said, did you, did, did you woman like that? Did she they get her? Get they, her all they, over? They get her a little, little, little uh, Get her motor run, run a little bit. Well, I looked over at her. That last time we passed them, I looked over at her. She's smiling at me. <laughs> I, I think I take that as a yes. Oh, and she liked it. Them boys, uh, now I don't know what made them boys. I said, well, anytime I've ever pulled up to a basic stock Silverado yeah. with, with a lawnmower license, uh, license plate on it. Uh-huh. Gets me fired I, up. I, I think, think that guy probably wants to race. I'm going to race him. You know. Come hell or hot water, I'm racing that son of a bitch. Like, when I think of, like, street rides, I'm thinking, like, you know, some serious Mustangs. Yeah. What else? Camaros. Camaros. Corvette. Definitely. Corvette. Definitely a stock crew cab Silverado four-wheel drive. <laughs> That's it. I bet he wants to race. I guarantee it. Locally hated. That's all day long. You know, uh, dating, like you said, is much different. I, we're just so far removed. We were at that. Oh, Charlie's, and there was a couple beside of us that was having the absolute worst date I'd ever seen two people have. And she was, this guy was trying his best to listen, Yeah, I guess. And she was telling him about some show that they needed, she, he needed to watch. He said, mm-hmm. I'll put that on my watch list tonight. And I thought, oof. I am so glad to not be in that world anymore. This yeah. poor, sad conversation that's happening, that the the crescendo of the entire thing was him going, well, I'll put that on my watch list tonight. Hmm. So that's just... Well, it could be worse. Like, I, not much. I mean, they were pretty sad. Well, how hard... These, these people, that they get... They can just get a date or some action by just having social media think about like yeah. we, we covered it not too not yeah. too many episodes long ago that you actually had to call if you if you wanted you, to date could you imagine having to talk to somebody's dad nowadays uh, you know I, crazy world we live if you want to talk to little sweet amanda you used to have to call and uh harold harold answer the phone what the hell you want with amanda yeah where well she ain't here well, what what do you need how can i help you well i don't think you can uh i don't think that's the situation that i'm trying to make occur here but uh, Don't even know I'll you, call Harold. back. I'll call back later. If you have to, maybe get, you won't. Okay. If you have to get in the phone book, get their number, just in case you didn't get it to you at school. You have to get in the phone book and look up Harold. Gentry. Ask your grandma whether or not you're related or not. They don't know nothing about that. Oh, people don't ask that around here. They just do it. What are you talking about? <laughs> yeah. you. Um, you know, I was. We went to Academy Sports, and there was an entire line of those trucks that that guy was talking about. Those boys being assholes in. There was an entire <laughs> line of those trucks over on the side, and. Probably 15 brand new white straw cowboy hats running around oh, over there. Nice. One boy without a shirt on, just everybody acting a fool over <laughs> there, setting up on the hoods. Not on the tailgate. Why would you sit on the tailgate? Let's sit on the damn hood of the truck. That's what they were doing. High tech rednecks. Mm-hmm. So if you're a girl, what do you do? Just, you just circle the parking lots of Academy and Tractor Supply looking for Instagram um, There was a usernames? There was a 16, 16 17-year-old boy in his... Uh, buddy riding around in a Dodge truck flying two flags out of the bed of his truck. Now, here's not the sad part. The sad part is I was there two or three weeks ago in the same parking lot, and the same boy in the same truck was driving around with two flags in the bed of his truck. Rebel and Trump. That's exactly the ones it was. Didn't see that one coming. <laughs> Rebel flag and a Trump flag. It said, no more bullshit on it. Oh, yeah, I've seen that one. Yeah. Snapchat handles Big Nuts 69 and... Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, lo- oh, set of truck nights on every truck. Oh, there yeah, too. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Locally hated 420. Mm-hmm. What else? You know. Uh, mama's money. You know. Daddy's good looks. Yeah. <laughs> Idiots. Stop yeah. being the stop being rednecks. I know. But the th- bad thing is, they're getting girls. But, they're getting them. But. There ain't no but they're getting them. Yeah. But they can have those. You know what I mean? The ones that they're getting, they can have them. You know what I mean? They're not smart ones. <laughs> yeah. They ain't gonna they're be the ones they need. Yeah. Well, probably. 
But then they're going to... They're, they're gonna, the ones that be smiling at you about going 110 times. <laughs> 111. Yeah, they're going to fornicate to make children, though. Yeah. Well, somebody did it to make them, so, I mean, that, <laughs> yeah. you know, it is what it is. I ain't knocking that kid. It is, he's a... He's a he's, I like the, I like him. Yeah. yeah. His stories are just fun. Too yeah. good not to repeat. Oh, yeah. Fantastic. And there's one daily. I mean, I get it one daily. Yeah. I don't have to... I don't have to have... Something some, about some being stretch. younger than 25. You know what I mean? Yeah. They're just... They're just... They're, I mean, they constant... Seek, I only hate on approval. it because I was there. I was there once, and I remember. I can remember all the shit that I did. Yeah. Ugh, I was an idiot. Yeah. You got anything else, Dustin? No, not really. You need no. to go meet somebody. You got a meeting coming up. We're an hour and a half in, too. Yep, that's good. That's. i just like to say, uh, Kristen Heflin, our friend, is in Tennessee this weekend, and I was hoping... Yeah, it would line up where we'd get to meet her, but mm-hmm. um, she she just fell in love in Grimey's rec- record store. She said, "Why?" Ah. She messaged me, said, "Why didn't you tell me about this?" I said, "I think I did." I believe, I believe you have. She uh, she gave her, asked for record store suggestion. I gave her Grimey's and Great Escape. So mm-hmm. she uh, she was there. Um, Justin Wells has got a new record out. Uh, the, the United State is out. Um, and you be proud. I've done some. I've been watching. Theo Vaughn videos on YouTube. He's moved to ten, moving, moving to Nashville. Oh, really? Theo Vaughn is, yeah. Between you and Thad, you've both suggested Theo Vaughn to me a hundred times, and I was at a guy from work's house the other day, and he was like, dude, dude, you got to watch Theo Vaughn. It was Theo Vaughn and somebody else. Brendan Chobb making fun of each other on King and the Sting. Uh, well, I don't know if it was Brendan. No, it was somebody else he'd had. This guy was interviewing, and they both had the big uh, Jeremy Mackey. Oh, sunglasses. he had Riff Raff on. Riff Raff. When he had Riff Raff on, yeah. How hilarious was that? Oh, Have you watched it? Yeah, I've watched it. They're hilarious. Riff Raff is like Theo Vaughn just amplified a little bit. Yeah. They're, so my question was, was Theo Vaughn doesn't really dress like that. He was just dressing like yeah. Riff Raff for the interview? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I, my, my knowledge of Theo Vaughn it was limited other than what you and Thad told me. <laughs> yeah. So I Googled him. They I hung like, out in Texas for some reason. You know, they were actually at Riff Raff's house whenever yeah. they'd done the interview. Shooting basketball or like doing something outside. They were sweating. And, yeah. Yeah. Oh, my God. If anybody needs to laugh hard today. There's no there's no harder laughs that you'll get than listening to Theo Vaughn, like, just off the dome. Like, his off the dome is better than anybody's you'll ever hear. That's what they were doing. Basically, yeah. that interview, they were just, like, one-upping one each other on, yeah. on the saying. Now, Riff Raff don't – Riff Raff's hilarious, but Theo Vaughn's always that way. Riff Raff kind of turns on whenever the camera comes on. Theo Vaughn, that's just him. You know, it's just how he is. I enjoyed it. I, yeah. I'll, I'll look up some more. So Theo sorry. Vaughn's moving to Nashville. He's moving out of California and coming to Nashville. Oh, there Bringing we... his podcast with him, I believe. Him and everybody else. Yeah. Yeah, there's there's several people coming out of uh, coming to Nashville. There's another big comedian, Josh Wolf, is moving to Nashville, too. i tell you who else is moving to Nashville. Jadavion Clowney. Don't have any idea who that the is. Biggest free agent in, in uh, football. Oh. Signing with the Titans. That's just a... That's just a sign of the times, you know, after Peyton Manning turned us down and Nadamak and Sue turned us down all these years, like the Titans don't ever get the big mm-hmm. fish in free agency. He turned down more money and a better offer. I don't know if more money, but um, the Seahawks traded for him last year. Uh-huh. He's a big defensive end that played for the Texans. He was the number one overall pick in 2014. He had a great career with the Texans. They traded him to the Seahawks. Um, New Orleans had a great offer in for him. I mean, so he turned down the Saints. The Ravens possibly had interest, and then uh, the Seahawks to come to Tennessee. His number was seventeen million. Is what his asking price was, and they got him for twelve million. Mm. So for one year, twelve million. That defense is just golly. It's just stacked. I retweeted something earlier. Of course, this will be nothing to you, but uh, it says Titans defensive outlook now. This is a NFL Twitter page. Davion Clowney, Daquan Jones, Jeffrey Simmons, Vic Beasley, Jayon Brown, Rashawn Evans, Harold Landry, Kamalea Correa, Adore Jackson, Malcolm Butler, Christian Fulton, Jonathan Joseph, Kevin Byard, and Kenny Vaccaro. Absolutely stacked. So, just, you know. Sure would be nice if there would be crowds in the... Uh, Stands. <laughs> yeah. Fans in the crowd to, uh, to be able to celebrate this team. Mm-hmm. So, and of course, all the, all the Twitter followers. When does football start? I think next weekend. Is it? Are they gonna? What are they gonna do about spectators? So, like the Colts announced, they can have twenty five hundred people in attendance. Twenty five hundred people. That's twenty five hundred more than Nashville's mayor's letting Titans have. Holy crap! Right now, all of September is. 
No, off well, limits to fans. Did the didn't the NBA go to a different state to play? Aren't they? So the NBA is in a bubble in Orlando, and it's in one basically three gyms. There's three gyms there. Uh-huh. But like for the first few weeks, they couldn't have their families with them. Uh-huh. They just now started letting their families come when other teams start getting eliminated. Mm. So it's in Orlando at Disney World. Okay. It's like a so the entire NBA is down there. Well, the ones that made the playoffs. Oh, okay. So they only resumed with the teams that were definitely going to the playoffs and a handful of teams that were on the bubble of making the playoffs. Mm. So Memphis missed so, it by like a game. So all they're doing is playoffs right now yeah. then. Oh, okay. They're in the second round, all the playoffs. But NFL, you can't really do a bubble. Right. So <laughs> I don't know. It's going to be crazy. It's just, it just sucks. Titans were terrible, terrible for so many years. Now they've come off of a – they're going to be good in the quarantine. <laughs> you know, they were basically a half away from going to the Super Bowl, and now mm-hmm. they got this loaded ass roster and no fans. To All watch defense, it. though, sound like it. On offense, no, they bring back Tannehill, Derek Henry, have two new contracts, and uh, A.J. Brown was almost rookie of the year for wide receiver, Corey Davis, John o. Smith, drafted a kid named Darrington Evans. Now they're freaking loaded. Mm. Every aspect of their game is loaded. Well, hopefully they can do something. Oh, on Twitter last night, all, all the non-Twitter fan base is like, oh, but I thought Jadavion Clowney wanted to go to a, a contender. I'm like, yeah. The same Titans that were one half away from making the Super Bowl the, that had a lead on the Kansas City Chiefs in the first half before they just finally crapped the bed in the second half. Like, they get no respect nationally. Mm-hmm. Like, everybody just looks at Tennessee Titans like, oh, they're just, you know, and people say, Ryan Tannehill. Well, he was garbage in Miami. But everybody, everybody just he was garbage in Miami. He had one good year. Yeah, but his one good year was like a year that not a lot of other quarterbacks has ever had. Mm-hmm. They act like he was terrible in Miami. Like act like he was garbage. He he got like an eighty million dollar contract extension mm. in Miami, then tore his ACL, mm. and he didn't have nowhere near the talent he's got here with Tennessee. So he gets no credit, no credit whatsoever for being. I mean, you don't get eighty million dollar contract on accident. <laughs> you wouldn't think he's so. He's a hell of a talented quarterback. Mm-hmm. You got Henry. I'm excited, but it's just the way it is. I mean, tennis. I mean, what do you got to do? They beat New England and Baltimore. Well, probably winning the Super Bowl would help. Yeah. Well, I mean, they they ended the Patriots dynasty. Mm-hmm. They went and beat a 14 and two Baltimore Ravens team in Baltimore after beating New England in New England. Mm-hmm. Was beating the eventual champions in the first half. They still treat them like they're the Cleveland Browns. Yeah, but. When they finally win the Super Bowl, then they'll I get hopefully it. they'll quit. There's a lot of teams that get credit, though, along the NFL and hadn't done, any, hadn't done anything. Have those so. teams won a Super Bowl before? I don't know. I don't know who I'm talking about. That was hypothetically <laughs> speaking right there. <laughs> North Springs Music Fest. Get your tickets. October 10th. Tell Lucas how beautiful it is and when you see him at Melvin's. Ooh, and tell me how nice it was. Tell him how good it was. Tell me how good it was. <laughs> Got anything else? Nah, that's it. Love you, everybody. Bye. Talk to you in a few weeks. <laughs>